Okay, I got a dumb sounding question for you. Do you know the difference between health, performance, and vanity? And I'll bet most people would just reflexively say, uh, yeah, of course, uh, duh. But if you think about it, there might be some differences that you haven't thought about before because the lines might seem a little blurry and that's no accident. And yeah, it actually matters because they are different objectives and you might be basing some of your decisions on the assumption that they're more or less the same. The advertising business has done a great job of planting this image in our consciousness that we should all aspire to. That image of a person who is healthy, fit, and beautiful. They eat amazing food. They do amazing yoga. They win amazing races. And they're absolutely gorgeous. You know what I'm talking about, right? Not real world stuff, just the image. It's as if to say that the person you want to be is healthy, beautiful, and fit, which are all kind of the same thing, right? 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 Wrong. They are not the same thing, and in some cases, they conflict. Let me give you an example. Imagine a competitive cyclist training for really strong legs while, for the most part, any muscle in their upper body is actually a liability because arm muscle makes you a little heavier but doesn't help you move the bike any faster. You'll be a faster road cyclist if you don't carry extra muscle weight on your biceps. Bikers also tend to have notoriously low bone density. Training for cycling does pretty much nothing to build bone density, so it's literally not uncommon for really young competitive cyclists to have the bone density of an octogenarian. Literally true. Now, is that body type generally healthy? Uh, I, I would say nope, and, and I'm a cyclist, so I know. Now, anyway, vanity is kind of subjective because everybody has different ideas as to what beauty looks like in a human. So. Now, just speaking for myself, when I imagine those guys who compete in those strongman competitions where they lift insanely heavy things, and it is incredible that a human body can do that, but it just seems like most of them have these huge guts. I mean, massive. You know what I'm talking about? And sure, it's probably muscle in there, but well, like I said, this is really subjective. I'm sure there must be some people who really do honestly find that attractive, but me personally, if I could trade bodies with one of those guys, it'd be a hard pass. And like I said, I am one of those cyclists with skinny arms. I probably could use a little more meat on my bones, but ugh, not like that. I'll take my skinny arms over that gargantuan gut any day. Feel free to disagree. I won't be hurt because the point is not whether or not them guys is pretty. The point is just that a professional strongman is probably not focusing on making himself purdy. And it's not limited to cycling. Unfortunately, a lot of sports can take a toll on your overall long-term health. You likely have an increased risk of joint problems if you're a hardcore skier or tennis player. Football players and boxers are at an increased risk of brain problems, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And I'm absolutely not criticizing that choice. It is amazing to see what the human body could do. More power to them. It's just to say that focusing on performance may not be in the best interest of your health or your vanity. Okay, so what about focusing on vanity? Well, again, this is a tough one because it is so subjective, but think about how many people develop eating disorders due to an obsession with being a certain size. It's tragically common. There are also a lot of supplements, drugs, and even diet plans that don't exactly support long-term health. We could probably argue specifics all day, but I think it's safe to say there have been some very unhealthy appetite suppressants out there. And a lot of people take cheap shots at folks who go that route, but it's actually not funny. People get in real trouble with that kind of stuff, and there's nothing funny about it. Now, to me, I question the long-term health impacts of a lot of things done for vanity's sake. Suffice to say, making vanity the main consideration of your life choices does not necessarily support your health, and you don't need a PhD to figure out that undernourishing yourself is not going to help you win any races. So, vanity also doesn't necessarily support performance even augmentation surgery, which is becoming increasingly popular with men who are opting for things like pectoral and buttock implants, jawline enhancements and such, isn't going to help you be a better athlete. 
And if there's a health benefit to having sacks of silicon stuffed in your butt, then I'm not aware of it. I don't know of any study suggesting that they're actually bad for you either, just not beneficial that I know of. But who knows? Maybe some study will come out that shows that men with butt implants are at a lower risk of all-cause mortality or something. Wouldn't that be a kick in the, uh, a kick in the, uh, a kick in the whatever it is that you happen to have down there? Not judging, not judging. Okay, so what about focusing on your health? Well, if you're going to choose one objective to focus on, health is not a bad one. If you focus your lifestyle choices and energy on being healthy, you'll get across-the-board benefits. You might not have the same body that you'd have if you focused strictly on how you look, but you will look better. You might not have the same level of performance at a given sport as someone who sacrifices everything to be good at that one sport, but you'll have some benefit. You'll bike faster than a couch potato, though probably not as fast as somebody who devotes their entire being to biking. The takeaway here is that none of these three goals is necessarily bad. There's nothing wrong, and it's even admirable to devote your life energy to training for excellence, absolutely. And focusing on your vanity isn't necessarily bad either, but the point is just that vanity, performance, and health are different things. So what does this have to do with food? Well, a lot. Food supports everything you do. Humans are walking matter to energy conversion machines. We take matter into our mouths in the form of food, and we transform it into energy in the form of our activities. We take in matter, we output energy. You probably make your food choices based on your activities, whatever they are. If you're a runner, you're probably always open to trying new fast burn carbs like gels and bars and sports drinks. If you're a bodybuilder, you may always be curious about ways to not only get more protein in your diet, but also seeking out the most bioavailable forms of protein. Even if you're a shameless couch potato, you likely choose your food based on the fact that you don't entirely care. <laughs> Choosing to not care is still a choice. You can't escape it. If you're trying to make your body look a certain way, then your preoccupation with food choices might even teeter into the realm of obsession but those choices really may not at all serve your health. Does this seem obvious when put this way? Well, maybe, but you don't have to look very far to see examples of advertising and other societal messages that strongly intimate the notion that what serves your vanity is healthy, and it is not. Now, admittedly, the line between health and performance is thinner, but it can still be useful to remember that they are also not the same. You might remember a couple weeks ago, I said that the food industry sells us first on a story about ourselves and the self-worth we wish we possessed. Well, this is one of the ways they hook you. If they can blur the line between health and vanity, they can sell you on the idea that something is healthy when really it's just window dressing for your vanity. Think about a tomato for a second and consider what the modern food industry has done to it. Because the priority has shifted more and more on profits over quality, the tomato has become increasingly bland. Consumers will instinctively buy the plumpest, most perfect-looking tomato without knowing how it got that way. Turns out that plumpness is achieved by giving it more water. The more water you give it, the more you dilute the flavor and the nutrients. So the plumper the tomato, the blander. And it turns out that the chemicals that give food its flavor often tend to be the same chemicals that give it nutrition. So that means the blander tomato is also less nutritious. As for the perfect shape, well, it's helpful to know that a blemished fruit is sometimes healthier. When plants have to defend themselves, they produce phytochemicals that your body can also use when you eat them. That's a process known as hormesis, when a living thing gets damaged. Just like when you tear down muscle through exercise, your body then combats that damage by building stronger tissue and producing chemicals that support immunity. So same with a tomato with a little blemish. It's probably healthier and probably tastier. So next time you see a big, plump, perfect tomato, buy it if you want, but just know that it's probably blander and less nutritious than the one that doesn't look as perfect. The extra water in that tomato calls flavor dilution. Or maybe we should call it dull ocean. And it ain't just tomatoes either. A recent study showed very clearly that modern fruits and vegetables are patently less nutritious than their counterparts of just a few decades ago. 
In short, it's because as we increase yield, there's a trade-off for nutrition and flavor. But I digress. Again. Well, we humans can be that way too. If we focus too much on how we look on the outside, there's a possibility that we might do ourselves a bigger favor by focusing on what's inside first. Not always true, but not a bad guideline. Build your self-worth from the inside out. Don't be like that plump, perfect tomato that's only attractive until you find out what's missing on the inside. If you're healthy, you will look better, and you will feel better too, and so you'll feel better about yourself, and that will actually make you all the more attractive anyway. But I would offer the advice that you should not let people manipulate you by telling you that by looking a certain way, that makes you healthy. There's oodles of boodle to be made by convincing people that vanity equals health, but it just ain't so. If you want to be healthy, you need to focus on, uh, <laughs> duh, your health, right? And so this becomes more and more true as we age. The older we get, the more important are things like bone density and the stabilizer muscles in our core. Like I said, I am a cyclist, so because of that, I always go out of my way to compensate for it by doing things that build bone density and stability, like hiking in the mountains. And luckily, I live in a great place for that. I also make sure to do a little qigong every day to even further support all those stabilizer muscles that will help keep me upright for a few more years. If I was obsessed with winning races, those things would actually hold me back. But I'm much more interested in having healthy bones when I get older. Bone density, by the way, is proving to be more and more important as we learn more about it, and especially the relationship between bone health and renal function. Super interesting, but yeah, later. So my advice? Focus on your health. You'll look better and you'll perform better. Maybe not as much as someone who obsesses over performance and vanity, but you'll get some benefit. Very few of us are professional athletes anyway, and all of us are growing older every day. Take care of your body. You're going to need it. Eat good food and lead a good life. You'll be glad you did. You'll also be glad if you're the first person to post a comment on this video, because the first person to post a comment on this video will win this Eat Is Love mug suitable for containing things. Anything you feel like writing is fine. Just say something, anything, and win this mug. And even if you're not the first, please do comment if you're so inspired. All comments help the channel. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and like and share because all those things help keep the channel going. You could say those things support the long-term health of the channel. Speaking of long-term health, there is a lot to unpack here, and we will talk more about the specifics of all of this stuff in later videos. But for now, it's time to wrap up this video. Thanks again so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Ciao.